are you doing? I'm doing excellent. I'm glad. Um, I'm so glad that you could be here uh, because I'm, I've been a fan of yours for years. years. <laughs> Not that many because you're still young, but you know, I've been a fan of yours for a long, long time. And, and uh, as I keep telling you, I've got a friend of mine from high school who's got a major crush on you. I keep waiting to meet him. I know. He wishes he could be here. Um, uh, but also to you, uh, I am so honored to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, within speak on speaking terms with somebody who has had such a huge influence on uh, Canadian theater, you know. And Thank you. The impact on Canadian theater has been massive, and you're legendary. And and uh, so I'm I have a crush too. Just don't tell my wife. I will. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start off with uh, your childhood. Let's let's hear about little Linda Griffiths growing up in. Where? Where did, you, where did you grow up? I grew up in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And I ended up there because my mother's from a Maclean from Cape Breton. It was okay. a family of nine with seven sisters. Okay. And they all moved to Montreal, which is where the East Coasters used to move. Right. And my father was with the RAF during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And he got posted to New York with many stops to Montreal. And my mother was an Air Force for hostess there. Okay. So when you ran out of money, you went to these Air Force clubs. There was an Air Force club and an Army club, and sort of good girls like my mother would dance with you, but there was no booze. So you went when you'd run out of money and you'd gone to all the really fun places, and you went there. And so one time my father ran out of money, and he and his pals went there, and he met my mom. Mm -hmm. And eventually was like a war bride and came over. And so we just were in Montreal, a total Anglos. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I grew up in uh, uh, Montreal North, and then we moved to what was beginning of the West Island. So mm -hmm. I was a total in a total Anglo archive, <laughs> mm -hmm. right. and um, with the French world of Quebec, sort of at this strange distance. And many people of that time will will talk about it. It's very odd. So. But still, I still think there's something of the Quebecer in me, mm -hmm. though it may not be obvious. <laughs> no. So I grew up in the beginnings of the, of, of the burbs, mm -hmm. and still, still can barely stand to be in a in a development or sub development of any kind. Really? Yes. Now I grew up in the burbs of Ottawa, and I think that there's something about it. What do you, I know? It influences my art, but I couldn't put a finger on it. What do you think influences? Do you think there's an influence of your, on your art from being in that environment, in the burbs? The fact you can't go anywhere? Mm -hmm. The fact that you're totally trapped? Mm -hmm. The fact that, no. Um, That's true. For one thing, what, what it did make me is not entirely a city person. Because right. like many of those early burbs, they're in the borderline of uh, farms. Right. So when we were there, our street was the last street. And then afterwards was fields and a little wood. And I was able to have a, a, a child, I mean, and people, you know, at that time, you just, I just disappeared for the day. Yeah. And I tried to build tree houses and forts and got soakers and was really wanted a raft and they never, they never floated. And so that was, it's still so strongly in me that when I recently was in Surrey and I could walk in woods in BC, it was just like, oh yeah, right, this is me too. I have to find some way to bring nature into my life. Right. We don't have the cottage, unfortunately. So, uh -huh. but yes, nature being a part of that. But I was very frustrated. I was frustrated at an early age with the lack of a cultural world. And I used to skip school and go to the Montreal Art Museum. Oh. I used. I was always trying to get downtown. Right. right. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was either, you know, get the tree place and climb up this huge tree with a book in my teeth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Or go to the city and and see what that brings in terms of a cultural environment. I also think isolation too. I think it, your imagination just you have to depend on it. I guess it does. It's true. It's yeah. true. But I wanted not the sameness really bothered me even yeah. when I was young. Right. And um, and although there were individuals in all those houses, mm -hmm. I wanted other. Right. Um. Huh. What? <laughs> what? What? What's it about your dad that you think your mom found attractive? What was it? 
he was a total hunk. Okay. He was hot. Okay. They were both beautiful young people. Mm -hmm. And I think she was very lively and very fun. Mm -hmm. And they're both talkers. And I, I was, it was whammo love for them, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, they both liked dancing. And, but they were both really humorous, life-filled, vital people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also, I think he wanted to marry a good girl. Right. You know, whatever happened in the war, you know, <laughs> and, that, and we could go there, mm -hmm. um, he wanted to marry, he, she was, she was a, a woman to marry. Yeah. Very loving, very kind, and from a, an open society, the open door of, the, of Cape Breton and generally of the East Coast. Mm -hmm. He was from the north of England, where you don't let anyone in the house, mm -hmm. right? And you only go to the pub. Right. And so the huge differences from working class Northern England and Cape Breton, hmm. you know, so there were huge differences between them, but they were, they were a really amazing couple for a long time. So you're in Montreal in the suburbs, running around, wanting to go downtown, and then something, was there a moment when you realized, oh, I'm an actor, or, or did you always feel that you were? I don't, you know, whether it's genetic, I was the kid with the puppet show in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm handing out flyers for something, I think, oh God, I've been doing this since I was eight. Come one, come all, you know, <laughs> like one of these things, like trying, to, trying to get the kids in the, in the, in the street to come into my puppet shows. And right. always, 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 if there was anything performative, I did a first one person piece when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. The priest, that was before we moved, you were supposed to do something at some, some uh, uh, kid's day or something, parent day. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, and he had some mime knowledge. And I don't know how this happened. He brought me into his like, le you know, leather and wood office and, and said, well, I've got two uh, choices for you. One is like Red Skelton. And he, he said, and he did this for me, like you have a, you know, a thing and it goes through your ear. And I said, I didn't want to be funny. And, he, and then he said, okay, well, then you could be an old woman who, tr who f tries to kill a mouse. And having had mice in my house since then, it's like mm -hmm. this repercussion. Mm -hmm. And so without any rehearsals at all, I went on with this chair and this thing, being an old woman, and, and killed a mouse. And that was my little five-minute piece. So always there, always there. Anything to do with performance, I was there, I was in the drama club, I was in the this, I wrote plays for the kids that I took care of at this park. Mm -hmm. It was always there. Most, and it became, became like a, was a visceral need. Mm -hmm. Whatever the base of that need was, it was something that I eventually had to do. Most kids want to be funny. Why did you say, I don't want to be funny? I don't know. I think I thought it would put me on the line more if I was supposed to, mm -hmm. maybe in my little child brain I went, if I'm supposed to be funny, then, and it goes bad, I, I, you know, it's a dud, <laughs> right? But if I'm not supposed to be funny, mm -hmm. I, I, and I'm funny, that'll be okay. So I, I think I did get a laugh bashing mm -hmm. that mouse. So, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Yeah. That's actually, that could be a, a tool for, for teaching uh, clowns.